Good evening, everybody. I am about to be joined by Dr. Venkat from Harley Street Fertility Clinic. Uh, we were talking just the other night all about egg freezing, and um, we're going to continue that conversation now. Um, and we're also going to talk about embryo grading because it's something that I found particularly um, interesting when I was going through IVF. I wanted to know more about what my embryo grades meant, um, what that meant for success rates and things like that. Um, so I'd really, really grateful for Dr. Venkat, who will be appearing any second now, to give us her thoughts on that and what that means. Um, and also, if you have any more questions from the other night um, regarding egg freezing, then please send them our way as we discuss it. Uh, we talked about who can benefit from egg freezing, um, when people should really try and do egg freezing, what the process involves, um, the cost and more. So I'm just waiting for Dr. Van Kapp to join now. She shouldn't be long. Um, and the other thing just to say, in case you don't know, um, is that we are running a competition with Harley Street Fertility Clinic. They're giving away um, one of their initial consultations, fertility MOTs and follow-up consultations worth £250. So if you just go to the Fertility Help Hub website, the link is in the bio, then you can apply there to win. Um, um, and the competition is running until the 16th of May. So go for it. It's a great giveaway um, and hopefully it will benefit someone. So um, hello to Dana Concierge, she's just joined. Um, so yes, we're just waiting for Dr. Venkat. Hopefully she'll be here in a minute. We had a few issues with... Um, signal um and the internet on monday so we're just going to recap because i had lots of people sending questions after our live and um egg freezing seemed like a very uh popular topic so we'll definitely be discussing it more just waiting to see if she's there last time she was there but i couldn't see her does anybody have any questions in the meantime before we start i think um, on Monday, there were various questions around cost, um, and that's something that she touched on. We talked also about um, how many rounds it could potentially take to um, retrieve enough eggs suitable um, for freezing. Again, for those who've just joined, we talked about the reasons why people might consider egg freezing and what's the best time to do egg freezing in terms of in your 20s, 30s, um, and just to, to give more awareness around it. So Dr. Van Kat's here now. So I'm going to add her in. It'll we'll be good. Bear with us. She's just joining now. Good evening to everyone who's joining. Hello. And please just jump in with any questions as we go. Good evening, Dr. Van Kat. How are you? Good evening, Eloise. Nice to be here. I'm sorry I'm embarrassed a little bit last time because my, no. my phone died. Oh, don't worry at all. Well, it's a very important conversation we're having. Um, we had lots of questions after our live, and I can see some questions coming in now. So if we just could please recap, um, I've just given a summary about what we're going to be discussing, talking about the process of egg freezing, who it, who it benefit, who benefits from it, um, the costs, um, and the, the sort of success rate it may bring so if you could please summarize where we were on monday um, and then we can take extra questions and then we're going to talk a bit about embryo grading um and and what that means in terms of success okay it's not a problem so we sort of started seeing uh, when women should start thinking about freezing the eggs what is the right time you know people always uh, keep on hoping that they will meet Mr. Right, and uh, if it doesn't happen, they start panicking, say around the age of 37, 38, and then I was just mentioning that it's rather late. So if you are going to delay starting the family, start freezing the eggs or consider freezing the eggs at an earlier age, something like late 20s and early 30s, because that's the peak of fertility. So that is the time when the egg quality is at the best mm -hmm. and we want to make use of it. So freeze mm -hmm. it when you are young. Then later on, you can always use it. If you don't need it and you meet Mr. Right, you have your children, it's not a problem. This is like an insurance policy. That's what we said. And we also said that, you know, when we freeze the eggs, you know, you can keep them frozen for up to 10 years. Now the HFEA have extended it up to 12 years because yeah. of the COVID situation, which is helpful for some women. And at the end of 12 years, say, for example, uh, Eloise, you asked that question, somebody is 25 now, at the age of 12 years, she will be 37. And if she's still not ready to have a baby at that age, what will happen? There is always a possibility of 
extending the storage of the eggs when a consultant or fertility doctor is happy to sign to say that if she doesn't then she will sort of become prematurely infertile so it can be extended for another 10 years that is not a problem and we also talked about the cost of egg freezing the egg freezing is not very cheap i sort of i am aware of it i accept it but that is because all these things cost a lot of money and that's the reason usually the egg freezing alone the treatment cost is something like 3000 pounds and plus the medication hormone injections and other things it will come to 3 to 5000 pounds and every a month we, uh, the woman has to pay for the storage of the egg which mm -hmm. will be 25 pounds per month mm -hmm. and at the age, young age of 25 and 30 i don't think women will have this kind of money i appreciate it so in harley street fertility clinic we have a finance plan whereby women can pay a certain percentage up front and pay the rest in installments Okay. And they will have an interest-free loan. There is no interest for this loan. And it will be helpful for such women. And that's what we touched upon. Um, and that's really useful for people who um, are perhaps in their late 20s or early 30s and aren't as financially sound as someone who might be approaching 40, for example. Um, when, when, as you said, that is um, not, not the best time to be doing egg freezing. Um, so if, if you could just sort of summarize a little bit more around the optimum time, that would be great because that was a question we got asked a lot on Monday. Um, and I guess there is a whole piece, isn't there, around awareness about that because some people may leave it a little bit late, not realizing the importance of age. Mm -hmm. So in this country, UK, we say women should have their cervical smears from the age of 25. Okay. So I always say then, yes, that is the age that every woman should have a fertility checkup or fertility MOT. Mm -hmm. And as you have seen, probably we offer a virtual consultation and remote fertility checkup for the women, the cost of 250 pounds. They don't need to get out of the house. We will send the kit to their house and they take a fingerprint test and send it to the lab. We'll have the result the next day. And this should be done from the age of in the early 20s. So women can then start planning their uh, family life because if someone says, look, I am career minded, I want to come up in life before I settle down in family, then she should think about freezing the eggs soon after 25 years. Yeah. But if someone is says, look, I'm not so much interested in career, I'm happy to settle down and have my babies now, then it's a different story. Mm -hmm. So women, I, I know at this age, Nobody thinks about family. 20, 25, mm -hmm. everybody wants to enjoy life and, you know, meet different people. And they want to travel. So, so many things are there in life. But at the same time, if you want to have a baby using your own eggs, it's important to think about it. And if you do a test and it is okay at that time, it's not going to be okay for life. Please mm -hmm. remember that. Mm -hmm. That's it, really good advice because yes. it can change quite quickly, can't it? Absolutely. I, um, I yes. had my AMH uh, checked at 30 when I was having IVF and I, I actually did a test and checked it again as I approached 35 next week yes. um, and it has dropped considerably. Yes. And see, AMH remains sort of stable up to certain age. And mm -hmm. in each woman, it starts dropping down suddenly. And this age is variable for, from person to person. So I cannot, or any fertility specialist, cannot predict saying that, okay, you are 25, your AMH is okay now. So till you are 35, everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. I can say that. So if you say, I don't want to freeze the eggs now, then I will say, come back in six months time, check your AMH. Or come back when you are 26, check your AMH. Then before it is too late, you are able to, do something about it. So please, we must think about our fertility, possibility of freezing the eggs, and when the woman is young, say in her late 20s, because that is the peak of her fertility. And we also said that the technology is now very helpful. Yes. It has changed. We are freezing by a new rapid freezing method that's called vitrification. The success rate by freezing the eggs with this technique 
gives the success rate of 90% of egg thawing. What it wow. means, when we take out 100 eggs, 90 of them will survive, which is great news. Previously, by old method, when we were freezing eggs, if we take out 100 eggs, only 40 were surviving. Look at wow. the difference. Yeah. Big significant difference that is because of the advancement in technology mm -hmm. people have perfected this technique and in our clinic also we have made babies from frozen donor eggs and all of them do well so there is no problem saying look we don't know whether frozen eggs will give rise to good babies healthy babies or not mm -hmm. to have no worries it can happen that's again because of the advancement in technology that's what we discussed last time and that's good, I presume, as well, because if the success rate of um, thawing um, eggs is higher, then I presume that um, you may, you, you will obviously still need a good amount of eggs to start with. But I would presume that might reduce the number of egg retrievals a woman might have to go through to um, have the success rate that you would hope for. Absolutely, Eloise, because if someone does it when they are young, then you'll have more eggs. So you don't have to do many rounds to mm -hmm. get a decent number of eggs. And your quality is likely to be better. Yes. So that way, again, you don't need a lot of eggs. If you have a reasonable number, you can end up with a healthy baby. So that's why it's advantageous for everybody to do when you are young. And of course, you can sort of um, use, make use of this finance plan to support yourself. Mm -hmm. um, someone's just said that they um, turned uh, 20, th sorry, 36 in uh, 2019. Uh, they went to freeze their eggs and were told that they had diminished egg reserve. So they want to start their family and have decided to use um, a sperm donor um, mm -hmm. and has had three failed IVF cycles. Um, I think that she may have said later on, actually, if you're watching, that she wishes that she'd frozen her eggs at 30. So what would be your advice at, at that point if someone finds themselves wishing that they'd done something earlier, what should they do at that point? Because, I, I, you know, there are other methods that can be used um, in terms of donor eggs and things like that. If Am mm -hmm. I right? If, if, the, if yes. your own egg reserve isn't, isn't good enough anymore. Correct. You're right. Because uh, obviously everybody wants children using their own DNA. That is the ideal outcome. And that's why when women want to freeze and they suddenly realize that AMH is low and the ovarian reserve is not good, uh, then it is a problem. And if they try IVF, the success rate is very low as well. Mm -hmm. And then in that case, the next the realistic option would be to consider using donor eggs. If someone has got a young sister, they can use the sister as an egg donor because you will be sharing the genes with your sister. This can happen only if you are very close with your sister and she understands you and you understand you are supportive of each other. Otherwise, generally, all these fertility clinics are anonymous donors and we have a huge egg donation program. People can come and use donor eggs. And sometimes women think that, say, someone is 40 and she has run out of eggs. Women think that, oh, my God, I am 40. My chances with egg donation is also going to be very low. That is a misconception mm -hmm. because the chance of success with donor eggs is 50 to 60 percent. Mm -hmm. Because it's the good, it? Yeah. Yes. And it doesn't have to be anonymous. It can be an open donor if that's what you wish as well. And that's what the rules are. That's what the rules are in the UK. Um, it can and be I guess it's personal preference in terms of how you want to build your family and whether you want to tell your children or not. And yeah, what you want that situation to look like. Yeah, you can have a known donor that is like your sister or friend or somebody who can help you, who's willing to help you. Then that is one way of doing it. That way, you will know where the eggs are coming from, what is the child going to be. But some people don't want to have known donation because they are worried that, they will, mm. that the children, child will be affected later on, in mm. which case they go for anonymous donation. Only in this condition, we must remember in the UK, now the law has changed. That means mm. at the age of 18, child can still find out about the donor. However, the person who is having the treatment is the legal mother and the, her partner is the legal father of the child. 
but the the child can go and find out about the donor the donor does not have any right or responsibility over the child mm -hmm. absolutely yeah mm -hmm. um and um if anyone has any questions as we're talking please feel free to send them over and dr venkat will be happy to answer them um i think that we've covered oh here we are sorry my doctor recommended i take um Prognova, is that right? And it really, it really helped increase the number of follicles. Um, and the doctor recommended it for women under 40 who have low egg reserve. Is that something that would be your recommendation as well? Yes. Now there are a few supplements which women can use uh, to increase the number of eggs and uh, improve the quality of the eggs as well. Because when the number goes down, when the AMH is low, there are two issues. Allies. That is, as we know, the egg number is low. And when the egg number is low, these are the last few eggs in the ovaries. Mm -hmm. It's like last few sort of, um, you know, Easter eggs in the chocolate in the basket. The good ones are gone first. The ovary releases the good eggs first. So the last few eggs, usually they are not so good in the quality. That is why women with low AMH, they have a lot of miscarriages because of this chromosomal abnormality in the eggs. That is the quality. That is the problem. And that's why we say it's better to freeze when they are young and when they have a good number of eggs as well as good quality eggs. Mm -hmm. So if someone comes to you wanting to freeze their eggs or wanting to look into it as an option, would you look at their AMH level rather than their age to decide whether it's worth it or not? Yes, no, the age is important, but we also look at the AMH level because I can then tell them, look, if you're supposing someone's AMH is two or something, it's very low, they mm -hmm. will need a few cycles to get mm -hmm. a decent number of eggs. And I always tell them, look, you start the process now, but like we were talking about the supplements, there are some supplements. These are all little bit of controversial things because there are no randomized control trials. Okay. And they say that this is called DHEA and this one and coenzyme Q10 mm -hmm. and melatonin. These things improve the quality of the eggs and egg number also. Because with, in my experience, I have had a patient. She had three attempts with her own eggs and her AM was, AMH was between three and four. She produced some five or six eggs and her egg quality was not good, so her embryos were not at all good, and she didn't get pregnant. So I told her, look, it is now time for you to move on to egg donation because you have already had three rounds with your own eggs. Don't spend more money and time, and also emotionally, it's not going to be easy mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. She said, no, Dr. Vakat, I will try. I want to have a baby with my own eggs. You tell me some supplements. So she went on these supplements for six months, and then when she came, her AMH improved a little bit. Even then I told her, you might need two to three cycles, which she did. And I'm not making this up. This is a true story. You can come and check with my colleagues. She ended up with twins. We put two yeah. embryos and she ended up with twins. And she changed the whole picture. Look, here is a lady I recommend egg donation. She yeah. ended up with twins with her own eggs. Like that's very that's very inspiring i have to say actually from a personal point of view um and this definitely isn't necessarily the case for everyone but my egg quality was better on my uh, second retrieval even though i was two years older after i'd had my first daughter through ivf um, and, and then we had twins um and i put that down uh, some of that i put down to uh, the my nutrition, the supplements, my, uh, my de-stressing methods, yes. um, the way I was living, I had longer to prepare for um, the sibling IVF round. So I feel that my body was in a better state um, for that cycle. Um, so someone just asked actually about COQ10. What's your, what's your recommendation in terms of that supplement? Um, how much to take and um, I presume even if there aren't any randomized studies to say it works there is no detrimental effect to take correct. it correct it's, it's good depending on the amount obviously correct the coenzyme q10 is actually a cellular catalyst what how it works is it makes the um, what is called makes the cell work better or more efficiently and there are some uh, structures within the cell uh, cytoplasm these are called mitochondria Mitochondria are the powerhouse 
you know if they are strong you will be energetic so mm. this coenzyme sub, you know supplies energy or makes the my, uh, mitochondria perform better so makes the cell more efficient and that is why people even generally you know people who want to look better they take coenzyme q10 and if they want to study and remember things they take uh, coenzyme q10 and similar in a similar way this one helps the quality of the eggs helps with the quality that's why like you said de-stressing corrects the hormone imbalance lois and that way it improves the quality of the eggs mm -hmm. all these things made supplements work mm -hmm. in such a way that our body is sort of uh, the environment for the eggs is much better so the ovary is able to produce better quality eggs okay that's really good to hear um and then um moving on to um our next sort of topic but i'm just going to say at this point um if in case you haven't seen and you've joined tonight um harley street fertility clinic are generously giving one of our fertility help hub readers um a free consult initial consult a free amh test and a follow-up consult so if that's of interest and you're at that stage then you just need to go to the fertility help hub website to enter um, and this will be running until the 16th of may so very generous offer there um and um it is in line with what we've obviously been discussing tonight um so sorry the, uh, she was just going back to asking about the dose of coq10 i presume it depends on what um the way that you're taking it whether it's capsules or liquid or things like that well if it is for general purpose no specific purpose 30 mg twice a day is enough okay. whereas for fertility if you want to improve the quality egg quality specifically uh, the standard dose for that is 100 mg three times daily a total of 300 mg which is split into three doses great great that's a that's brilliant to hear. So thank you. I hope that's answered your question, Kelly. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, embryo grading. And um, that's something of huge interest to me because I never really understood it when I was told the grades of my embryos. Um, and I feel like uh, going into a transfer, if you're told that you've got an excellent embryo, you're almost set up to assume that it's going to work. Yes. Um, so it's very difficult to take a failure when you've had two embryos transferred which mm. were supposedly top rate quality so if you could just explain a little bit more about how they're graded and what that means that would be great and if anyone has any questions uh please ask yes and you had babies that means they obviously they must have been good excellent embryos well i think <laughs> they i can't remember the grading but they definitely weren't uh, you know they weren't <laughs> top 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 notch so um i yeah. don't know <laughs> okay so the grading of the embryos is different for day three embryos. So as you know, when the day on the day of the egg collection, the egg is sort of fertilized with the sperm, and that's by IVF or ICSI. Next day we look at it. That is day one, and we'll see how many have fertilized. At that stage, they are one cell, and then late after that, next day they divide. They become between two to four cell, and then on the third day they become between six to eight cell. Mm -hmm. So usually we transfer the embryos either on day three or day five. Nowadays, all the clinic are inclining towards day five transfer. Mm -hmm. That is the blastocyst because that has a higher chance of success. What I mean is higher chances of implantation. Because normally the embryos come to the uterus in the blastocyst stage and that is the stage when they attach. Even if we transfer the embryos on day three, they are just floating around in the womb and then they become blastocysts only then they attach or implant. Therefore, nowadays we are transferring the embryos on day five. On day three, if we transfer embryos, um, I don't know whether you had on day three or day five. So day three, we call them cell stage. That is six cell or seven cell or eight cell. So you'll have a number first and then the grading will be one, two, three, or four. That is another number. And that will be out of four grading. Okay. So uh, four out of four will be the best grade embryo. It has got the maximum score. Three out of four is a good embryo. Two out of four scoring is average. One out of four is poor. So usually we transfer only three um, stage three and four embryos, not 
one and two because their quality is not good. What they mean by this, this one, two, three, four, is the symmetry of the cells in the embryo. That means one may be big, one may be small. That is, we don't like that. We like all the cells to be of similar shape and regular in outline. And also when they divide, they send out some fragments like, you know, where the metabolic division sends some waste material outside into the cytoplasm. These are called fragments. If there is more fragmentation, the grading of the embryo goes down. Mm -hmm. It is not a good sign because it interferes with the implantation. So if yours is the top-notch embryo, it will be, say, for example, eight cell and no fragmentation at all. That means it's four out of four. That is the best embryo. Okay. And three out of four also is good. We can have a baby. Okay. If you if you go to day five, which is the blastocyst stage, what happens at this stage is day three embryo, as I told you, they had, the embryo had between six to eight cells only. Between the third day and the fifth day, the embryo divides much more. And on the fifth day, the embryo has more than 100 cells. Mm -hmm. And also it develops what is called collection of fluid inside. That is why it is called blastocyst. Because cyst means fluid collection, blastocyst, blastomeres are the embryo cells. So there is a collection of fluid within the uh, embryo cells. That's why it's called blastocyst stage. Mm -hmm. Now, in the, at this stage, what happens is the embryo is more advanced and more differentiated. If you look at the cells on day three, all the cells are the same. Whereas on day five, the cells differentiate into two groups of cells. Mm -hmm. So at one corner, say for example, imagine mm -hmm. a ball. It is because in three dimension and in one corner or one margin, there will be a clump of cells. These are called inner cell mass. mass that is the technical term. But in other words, these cells become the baby or the fetus. Mm -hmm. And there will be another set of cells which are sort of along the margin of all the, you know, the circular thing, round thing. And those cells become the placenta. Okay. So, um, thank you. And someone's just asked, um, have you ever known success with a day seven embryo? No, in this country, we don't transfer day seven. Maximum mm -hmm. is day six we transfer. Okay. Day okay. seven, we are not allowed to transfer. Okay. Day so seven, um, we freeze. Freeze. Okay. Um, so someone said that they they have two embryos left. They're transferring them in June. Embryo one developed day six, grade four C B, um, and the second embryo day seven, grade four B C. What are what are her chances? She's rather nervous. Yes, it is. But all this. Okay, the grading. I will explain little more. In the embryo, the blastocyst stage grading, grading is done in a different way. Mm -hmm. Initially, it is a small ball, and then it expands like this, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So the, as the ex expansion gets bigger, the scoring is much better. So okay. small one is called one blastocyst. Then it is two, three, four. Four is an expanded blastocyst. Five is further expanded. Then there will be two letters followed by this number in mm -hmm. this first letter refers to the grading of the inner cell mass that is the group of cells which will become the baby or the fetus so if someone is four a a for example that first a is from the, for the baby cells and the second a refers to the placental cells okay so if this lady has b did you say four b c yes so 4BC means it's fully expanded blastocyst, which is good. B means B, A and B are good grading of the cells. So that is good. C is slightly lower than B. But remember, the, it is the placental cell grading. More mm -hmm. important is the uh, baby, that is fetal cell grading. That's why the first letter is more important than the second letter. Okay. It's and the Mm. And you shouldn't generally be disheartened if that's a B rather than an A, because obviously everyone assumes that A is top notch and um, going to result in a better outcome. Yes. No, no, no. Look, you never know which embryo is going to give you a baby. We once transferred, you won't believe, once transferred 
four BB to one lady, and she had another embryo, which was three DD, D, D for David, okay? D is the worst of all, A, B, C, D. And so we told her, look, have your good embryo, don't worry about the other one. And she said, look, it is a potential baby for me. I don't want to throw it, so let me also have that anyway. It's going to be otherwise, we are not going to freeze it because the quality was not good. So we were going to discard it. So she said, look, I don't want to discard it. Let me have that one also. You won't believe we never thought it would happen. She ended up with twins. One was from BB, other one was, so when she had, she had two girls. One girl was running around, the other one was very quiet and sitting. So she always says the run, one which is running is BB, other the quiet one is the DD doctor. <laughs> um, <laughs> what so, I want to say is like, don't think that BC and CC will not make babies. We mm -hmm. never know which embryo. Every embryo is a potential baby. Of course, um, we want everything to be perfect. We want everything to be AA, but it doesn't happen. Go with a positive thing, prepare well, and if it's meant to happen, it will happen. And I guess that's a good point to say, isn't it? That people need to, um, you know, have these conversations with their fertility clinic to um, ascertain what, you know, take their advice in terms of what the embryologist is saying, what the specialist is saying, um, and trust that they'll be making the judgment about which one to transfer, if there is one or, or a couple to transfer. Correct. And if they are not of good quality, I don't think the fertility clinic would have frozen those embryos. Okay. So there is a chance, reasonable chance of that embryo giving rise to a baby. That's why they have frozen it. You know, it, it's not the top notch, but still, hey, let's try. If it gives you a baby, we are all happy at the end. So don't mm -hmm. think, oh, my chances are low. No, no, no. Every embryo has a potential. You have to make it better for the embryo to develop inside. Do everything. Develop your lining and do other tests with support mechanisms and everything. And uh, we have to think about it like that. Yes, whatever we have got to go for the embryos we have got. And uh, we should not feel dejected about it. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, someone has just asked or, or said um, that they have, they had to um, frozen embryo transfers with five AA embryo uh, mm. in the first and four AA during the second. Uh, both her cycles failed. She had a chemical pregnancy from the second one. Does multiple embryo transfer increase success rate? Mm. Well, it depends on the age of the woman because if a 5AA embryo from a 32-year-old woman is different from 5AA embryo from a 42-year-old. Right. The chemical contents are very different. Why I say that is the implantation potential of the embryo, which was from a 32-year-old woman, is higher. And not only that, the phrase which says appearances are deceptive is applicable even to the embryos. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. even if it is a top-notch embryo, 4AA, is it chromosomally normal or not? Nobody knows. So nowadays, mm -hmm. we are recommending more and more of testing the embryos. So if somebody has... 4AA and 4BB, we will say 4AA is the best one, we must transfer it. But you check these two embryos, 4AA might have Down syndrome chromosomes, extra chromosome, so it's an abnormal embryo, whereas 4BB might have all normal chromosomes. In which case, if you transfer 4BB, even though it's not so good as the first one, it's likely to give a, a healthy baby at the end. Right. Whereas if you transfer 5AA, which is, it has abnormal chromosome, I'm only saying that, I'm not saying all the 5AAs are like that. I'm saying, unless we test, we don't know. So mm -hmm. even though it was a great quality embryo, probably these miscarriages and failure to, you know, the failure of the treatment happens because of this chromosomal issues. That is why nowadays we say, especially when we are going to transfer one embryo, we want our patients to get pregnant in the first attempt. That means if I have three embryos, which one will I choose? So I have to put the right embryo inside. What is the right embryo? One which has got good implanting capacity, which is shown by the grading, 
and also which has got normal chromosomes these are called euploid embryos that means the pregnancy is likely to continue she is not likely to miscarry because of all these issues and at the end we'll have a healthy baby not some disabled baby or other issues so, and someone has asked um is the grading subjective to the embryologist yes it is done by the embryologist as well as with the clinician because now we don't need to take the embryos out they are in the time lapse embryoscope you go into the lab you can see with the camera how the embryo has uh, you know behaved throughout the night in the morning mm -hmm. you look at it then you can say but usually done by the embryologist that's why the experience of the embryologist is very important mm -hmm. of course um does an expansion grade of 2 on day 5 mean it has less chance of success as it is less expanded uh yes expansion say com comparing two embryos where one is more expanded other one is not so expanded then the expanded one which is poor in grading than two has a better chance of implantation okay okay great well thank you so much for answering those questions um and for all of your expertise this evening on egg freezing and also um on embryo grading um if anyone has any more questions please feel free to send them over and um i can pass them on um and also uh, thank you everyone for joining and as i mentioned if you'd like to um take part in our giveaway then please go to the fertility help hub website the link is in the bio um and you can enter there for a chance to win a fantastic giveaway thank you alice thank, thank you. you very much have a lovely evening everyone thank you for your time bye 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 bye